All right, guys, today I'm going to go over a post-test study guide, part two. Um, my goal is to finish it up. So um, we're going to start at 23, and hopefully I get the whole thing, but it might need a third video. So remember, this is your hint page. Um, when I go over this in class, I'm going to try and tell you which number goes with each hint. So a lot of it's just formulas and stuff, so you should know which one it is, um, and so forth and so on. Uh, 23. 23 says use the figure to the right. So we did a fire starter very similar to this. It might actually have been the same exact one. So you put 5x plus 3 for k and l. See k and l. So that's black. L and m. See l, then n, then m. That's all. That's going to be 2x plus 24. And they want it to be a right angle. So this idea that a right angle means it's equal to 90. So I'm going to have 5x plus 3 plus 2x plus 24 equals 90. I end up with 7x plus 27 equals 90. 7x equals uh, 63. And I divide by 7 on both sides. I get equal to 9. So that's just PEMDAS in reverse. Make sure you combine the like terms first, that you do 5x and 2x to get 7x, and 3 and 24 to get 27. Then you use PEMDAS in reverse. Subtract 27 from both sides, and then divide by 7 on both sides. That's how we got 9. That's a variable, now it's a state to measure every angle. I have to plug in 9 in for x, so the measurement of angle K and L is equal to 5 times 9 plus 3, which is equal to 48 degrees. The measure of angle L and M is 2 times 9 plus 24, so that's equal to 42 degrees. And that's it. All right, 24, name each polygon, if it is one, you know, by its number of sides, and classify it as convex or concave and regular, regular. There's one on 24A. We have one, two, three, four sides. Um, that makes it a quadrilateral. And it is convex because it does not cave in, or like if you extended the extended the lines, that would go inside. Um, and it is irregular because they are not all well, not all the sides are the same length, and they aren't they aren't the same angle. B is not a polygon because of the curve right there. Uh, C. should have this, so even though I forgot it. Um, so Z has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. C is a decagon. Um, it is convex. And although it doesn't, I forgot the markings, I meant to make it uh, regular. Technically, if you put a regular, you would have gotten credit, but um, I didn't mean to make it uh, regular. Technically, it's not regular because it doesn't have the markings to say they're all congruent, even though it is. Uh, D, I count the sides. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's called a dodecagon. It is, conca it is concave because um, if you extended those side lengths here, they would go inside. And then uh, anything concave is automatically irregular. And that's it for uh, 24. 25. Find the perimeter and area of the figures. So these are triangles. All right. To find the, uh, to find the, the last side, I'm going to have to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I have to do 6 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared because I don't know what this is. So I'm going to get uh, 36 plus 64 equals c squared, 100 equals c squared. That means I square root both sides. I get c equals 10. So this is 10 centimeters. Now I can find the perimeter. Make sure you label it with perimeter. It's 6 plus 8 plus 10. I get 14 plus 10. It's 24 centimeters. So make sure you say p equals 24 centimeters. Now the area. Area is equal to one half base times height. This is the base, that's the height. So one half six times eight. 
So the area is going to be equal to uh, one half. The area is going to be equal to 24, but this time you have to put square centimeters. So make sure you have the square centimeters or it's not going to be correct. So and make sure you have the A. That's it. B, a little bit easier because I have all three sides given to you. If I forgot a side length, that might be kind of hard. So I definitely can find the area. Area is equal to 1 half the base, which is 15, times the height, which is 24. So my area is going to be equal to, area is going to be equal to 180 square inches. And... The perimeter, we need to know this side length right here. For just all intents and purposes, we'll say it's 22 inches. So we're going to have 15. So the perimeter is going to be equal to 26 plus 15 plus 22. So it's going to be equal to 63 inches. So perimeter is 63 inches, area is equal to 180, 180 square inches. All right, nine, pretty easy. Perimeter is going to be equal to nine plus nine plus nine plus nine. So that's going to be 36 feet. So perimeter is equal to 36 feet. Area, area is equal to side squared in the square. So area is going to go to nine squared. Area is going to go to 81 square feet. Don't forget your label. Area for B, it's length times width, so area is equal to 7 times 11, so area is equal to 77 square meters. The perimeter is pretty easy too. I know that this is 11, I know that's at 7, so my perimeter is going to be equal to uh, 14 plus 22, so my perimeter is going to be equal to 36 meters. All right? Make sure you have the no square for the perimeter and you have a square meters for the area. All right, 27 and 28 are circles, so we're going to use circumference. The circumference is 2 pi r, or pi times the diameter, so that's a diameter. So the radius is going to be 4.5, so the radius is 4.5 is my r. So I'm going to say c is equal to 2 pi times 4.5, and I'm just going to plug that into calculator. And I end up getting the circumference is equal to 28.27, and it is inches. Area is equal to pi r squared. So my area is going to equal to pi times 4.5 squared. I'm going to put that in the calculator, just like that. And I end up with 63.62 square inches. Uh, B, very similar, it's times in feet, so it's going to be my area is going to equal to pi times 6 squared. So my area is going to equal to 36 pi, which I'll just throw in the calculator. And I'm going to get area equals 113.1. .1. Now circumference is equal to 2 pi r, so I'm going to get C equals 2 times the pi times 6, so I'm going to get 12 pi. So my first circumference is going to be equal to... 37.7 feet, and I forgot my square feet here. So don't forget your labels, and that's it for 27. All right, 28, 29, surface area and volume. Surface area of a cube, or of a, of a sphere. Surface area is equal to uh, 4 pi r squared. So I'm just going to be equal to 4 times pi times 7 squared. So I'm going to get uh, 49 times 4, which is 196. I'm going to throw my calculator. So the surface area equals 615.75 square meters. Now the volume is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. I'm just going to plug that in. And if you're not sure where I'm getting these... Uh, these formulas from you just check over here to the same page and this is kind of where you're getting them from 
So there's the there's the the formulas for uh, circle right here, and that's that's where I'm getting it from. So I'm going to put four thirds pi times seven cubed all in my calculator. You can put all in just like that, or you could do seven cubed, which is three forty three times of by four thirds, and then pi. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to get volume equals four thirds pi times seven cubed. So I end up with one thousand four hundred and thirty six. 0.76, and don't forget it's cubic meters. All right, that's it for 28. Now the key, the this is a rec, this is a prism. So I'm gonna need my surface area is going to be the perimeter of the height plus two times the area of the base. You could also find the area of all six sides and just add them up, but this is a little bit easier. Now I'm calling this the base. I'm calling this the base, this rectangle right here. So the perimeter of that is going to be three and 3 which is 6 and 5 and 5 which is 10 so 16 so my first is going to be 16 which means I'm calling this the height so that's going to be 12 now the area of the base is 3 times 5 so it's going to be plus 2 times 15 so my surface area I'm going to plug in my calculator just like that or you could do 16 times 12 um, if you want to use a calculator you can uh, 16 times 12, 16 times 10 is 160, so 16 times 12 is 192, plus the 30, so I end up with a uh, surface area, it's going to be called 212 square feet. Now volume, volume is really easy, it's length times width times height, if you're using a rectangular prism formula, which most of us know. Um, the formula for any prism is the area of the base times the height, well the area of the base is 15 times the height, which is 12. So my volume is going to be equal to 15 times 12. Well, 10 times 15 is 150. 2 times 15 is 30. So I'm going to get my volume is going to be equal to 180 cubic feet. So there's my volume. There's my surface area. 30 is still a prism. It's actually a triangular prism. Which means this is one of the this is the base, and this is also the base. All right. So surface area is equal to the perimeter of the base times the height plus two times the area of the base. So surface area, the perimeter of the triangle is going to be the perimeter of the base. Is going to be equal to 16 plus 12 plus 20, which is going to be equal to 48. So I have 48 here. The height, this is the height. It's not the height of the base, it's the height of the entire figure. So this is a figure that's laying on its side. Plus the area of the base, well, the area of the triangle is going to be equal to one half of 12 times 16. Um, so half of 16 is 8, 8 times 12 this is going to be 96. All right. So I'm going to have 480 plus 192. So my surface area is going to be equal to 672 square centimeters. Now the volume is going to be equal to the area of the base times the height. Well, we just found out the area of the base. It's 96. So it's 96 times 10. So my volume is going to be equal to 960 cubic centimeters. Oh, I didn't put a little through there. So cubic centimeters. All right. And that's it for uh, 30. All right, 31. It looks like I cut off my picture. I hope this is 25. If it's not, it's going to change a little bit. But it'll be the same exact concept you're following along. You just got to plug in. Wherever I plug in 25, you got to plug in um, whatever it's supposed to be. But I thought it was 25. So remember, this is a diameter. So the, the radius is half of that. That's 11 meters is the radius. So this is also a cylinder. So we're going to be using the cylinder formulas. So if you go back to your hint page, if you're not sure, you find that the surface area is 2 pi r times the height plus 2 pi r squared. So my surface area is equal to 2 
pi r times the height plus 2 pi r squared. And my volume is going to be equal to pi r squared times the height. So now I'm going to put my surface area. I'm just going to put 2 pi instead of r. I'm going to put 11, not 22. The height is 25 plus 2 pi. And then instead of r, I'm going to put 25 squared. And I'm just going to type these. I'm going to type the whole thing in my calculator if you want. Um, if you don't want, you could do it separately, but I think it's just as easy to type it all in. All right, so I plugged it in. I got 1,727.88 for the first part, and then 3,927 for the second part. So my surface area becomes 5,654.88 square meters. Now the volume, I'm going to do pi. The radius is 11. I'm going to square it times 25. Plug that in my calculator. Volume is a little bit simpler. So my volume is going to be equal to 9,503.02 cubic meters. And that's it for uh, volume and 31. All right, 32 is a pyramid. Um, I believe it's supposed to be a square pyramid, so make this 14 inches as well. Um, I think that's what I meant for it to be. So it's a square pyramid. So the area, the surface area formula for a pyramid is one half the perimeter times the height plus the area of the base. Um, let's double check our hint page to make sure it's right. Perimeter, one, oh, times the slant length. See, I messed up. Good thing I checked. So this is supposed to be an L right here. That makes more sense. Because remember, this is L. This is height. Slant length and height are a little bit different. All right. So my area is going to go to the perimeter of the base. So it's one half. The perimeter is 14. 14 plus 14 plus 14. So it's going to be 56 times the slant length, which is 25, plus the area of the base is 14 squared, or uh, 196. So big B is equal to 14 squared, which is 196. So half of one half of 56 uh, times 25 plus 196. So my surface area is going to be equal to it's going to be equal to 896 square inches. So let me rewrite that. Surface area is going to be equal to 896 square inches. Volume for the pyramid is going to be one-third the area of the base times the height. Well, we already know the area of the base. So it's one-third, 196 times the height, which is not 24, but it's 25. I'm just going to type that into my calculator. And I have to put my volume is equal to 1,568. Write that a little bit neater. Cubic inches. There's my volume, and there's my surface area. And that's it for 32. All right, so this is a cone. The surface area formula for a cone is going to be equal to pi r, pi r L plus pi r, oh, not pi r, yeah, plus pi r squared. Once again, we're just going to double check our hint sheet to make sure I didn't mess that up. And if I get the cone, I get pi r L plus pi r squared, so that's correct. Remember, this is L, this is H. So my surface area is going to be equal to pi times the radius, which is 16. So that's my r. In the length, which is or the the slant length, which is 34, plus pi 16 squared. I'm just going to type that into my calculator. All right, so my surface area. I plug in the first chunk of my calculator. So I plug this in my calculator, just like this. And I got 1,709.03. I plug that into my calculator, and I got 804.25. I added them together, and I ended up with 2,513. Point um, two eight, and that's square meters. Now I'm going to get my volume. My volume is a little bit easier. My volume is going to be equal to one third 
um, pi r squared times the height. So my volume is going to go one third pi, and my r is 16, and my height is 30. So I'm just going to type in my calculator just like that. And I hope my volume is going to be 8,042.48 cubic meters. And my volume, and there's my surface area. All right, 34. If I spun that around, imagine that we spun this around about AC. So I'm going to spin it like a like a top almost, and it's going to come all the way around, and it's going to make a cone if that makes sense. So that's going to make a cone. And that's it for 34. All right, 35's got a, it's saying this. AB is parallel to CD, so that means parallel. And we have to remember here that a triangle makes up 180 degrees. So if that's 40, that's 90. This X immediately has to be 50 degrees, all right? And the cool thing about two parallel lines is corresponding angles are congruent. So that means this 50 right here goes is true for the same exact reason that this 90 is equal to that 90 corresponding angles uh, because they're parallel. All right. So that's kind of cool. Makes that 50 because that goes back. It's a similar triangle too. Now, if this is 50, this whole line has to be um, equal to 180. So angle AB, we'll call this E right here. So angle ABE plus angle ABD equals 180. So we're going to say 50 plus Y minus 10 equals 180. So I'm going to do 50 minus 10. I get Y plus 40 equals 180. So now I subtract 40 from both sides. So Y is equal to um, 140 degrees. So y equals 140 degrees, x equals 50 degrees. And that's it for 35. All right, 36. Use the figure to the right. Triangle XYZ is shown. Which triangle must be similar? So a triangle that measures 40 degrees, well, that's impossible because a triangle together has to equal 180 degrees. A triangle that measures angle that with angles 40 degrees and 60 degrees. So similar triangles have to have the same angles. They don't have the same length, but they have the same angles. So remember, we already know that this one has to be 50 degrees. And if I had a triangle that was 40 degrees and 60 degrees, this would have to be 80 degrees. So they were not going to have similar, so there's no way B is going to be true. Um, maybe you don't know what scalene means, but maybe you know what isosceles means. Isosceles triangle is only one measure that angles 40 degrees. Well, if I have one measure that equals 40 degrees in an isosceles triangle, if that's 40 degrees, together these two angles have to be 180 degrees, which means the only way that's going to be true is if they're if they're if they're 70. Because remember. An isosceles triangle has congruent signs. If the, and the opposite sides of the triangle, opposite, the angle opposite of the triangle has to be congruent. All right. So if you have congruent sides, if these were congruent right here, this angle and this angle would also be congruent. And they're not. So that's why that one's not going to work. So this is the only one that measures. A scalene triangle with only one angle that measures 100 degrees. All right, 37, a, full, a, full, a figure is fully containing quadrant 2. So this is quadrant 2. All right, so um, there's a graph, and that's how the quadrants are labeled. Quadrant 1 is the top right, then 2, 3, and 4 in that order. So let's say we had a figure. All right, we'll make a figure. Um, I'll just put a square, right, a little square right here. And a reflection over the x-axis, a friction of looking in the mirror. 
So I'm going to move this. I'm going to just basically like flip this over like you fold your paper in half. And this square would go here at the reflection over the uh, x-axis. Oh, and I messed up because it wants it. They want the quadrant to be in angle two to start. So we'll make our little box right here. So when it re when it reflects, it goes right here. Now our reflection over the y, y equals x. This is the line y equals x. So when it reflects it, it kind of like flips it over that line. And in this problem, it's not really going to do much. And anything, even if I had something all the way over here, it would keep it in quadrant two. So it's not going to change quadrants. A 90 degrees clockwise or, uh, rotation about the origin. So clockwise, clockwise is this way. And 90 degrees is like a right angle. So this guy is going to move 90 degrees that way. So I'm going to go 90 degrees right here. And there's my, there's my resulting image. And I have it resulting in quadrant four. And that's it for 37. Uh, this one's pretty easy. Slope formula. Slope is equal to the change in the y's. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Technically, it doesn't matter which x or y you order as long as you, you keep your pairs together. So you could use the second one. But you make sure if you use the second, if you use y2 on top, you better use uh, y x2 on bottom to start. So I'm going to put 8 minus negative 5 all over 6 minus 2. 8 minus negative 5 is 13. All over 6 minus 2 is 4. So my slope is going to be equal to 13 fourths. Or maybe you put a uh, uh, 4 and a third. That's it for 38. And that's A. There is a rule. That when you have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle as shown, that the opposite angles equal 180. So opposite angles equal 180 when you have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. So 83 plus y has to equal 180. I subtract 83 from both sides, so y is equal to 97 degrees. And that's b. All right, so we have two sets of parallel lines. We're trying to write a proof. So they tell you these two are parallel to each other. And what's the first thing you can say? Well, the first thing that I'm going to say is I'm going to say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Because there's a rule that says alternate interior angles are congruent. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Now I'm going to say angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. And that's because corresponding angles are congruent in, in parallel lines. And finally, I can use the transitive property to say angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. All right, and that's it. 41 is about trig identities, sine, cosine, and tangent. There's a little mnemonic. It's a Sokotoa. And O would be the opposite. So if we're talking about angle A, so we're talking about angle A, this is the opposite. This is the adjacent. And this is the hypotenuse. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to do opposite is over adjacent. So it's going to be 24 over 10, so it's going to be 2.4, which is D. All right, 42, I wrote down the order of pairs, and there's the quadrants. So remember, X is left and right, and Y is up and down. All right, 44 is D, and I don't get a lot of time, so I'm going to kind of squeeze it in. I'm going to hit pause and just read these steps. Um, 128 vertical, I made a pentagon. I, this makes this going to be 115. And then they make a linear pair, which is why that's going to be 65 degrees. All right. Um, I put about all the stuff you need to know for this one. 
have any questions, just ask. And that finishes this video. Um, sorry, I was kind of rushed.